Alright, it's been a hot minute since I've actually done one of these updates, but I swear I have a good reason. Yeah, no, no, I don't. Alright, as always, we're going to look at VRChat's updates from their developer posts and figure out which updates are actually for us developers. Starting with October, the Creator Companion was announced as the replacement for the SDK distribution that they're doing. Meaning, you really won't be able to download the Unity packages from the websites in the future. Instead, you will be getting everything through the Creator Companion. And that's a much cleaner way to make sure that your updates actually come through smoothly, though I understand it might be a little bit obnoxious to add in another tool for your setup. The current version is being reworked and they announced that in October as well, where they were showing off the new UI where the application isn't actually just made in Unity, it's just a real application now. October also saw the graph UI update. This lets you have things like multiple graph tabs. The sidebar has been completely redone with the groups and events events tabs organized towards the bottom of it. They added keystroke plus mouse clicking for various nodes to get you different things faster instead of having to search everything up. A lot of this is done to match common graph tools such as like shader editors in Unity or Unreal. We also got networking updates such as the network IDs uh, are now baked into the scene rather than hierarchy base. Previously, if you had a difference between your PC build and your quest build where you had like like deleted some objects between one or the other, the way networking was done was based on position and hierarchy. So if you deleted something, suddenly one synced pickup would be in the spot that a different synced pickup was on. But now these IDs are baked in in Unity instead of generating when it's uh, started. We also got the start of the VRC graphics library which is basically a port of certain graphics functions in Unity for us to be able to use in Udon, such as uh, Blit, which lets you transfer one texture onto a render texture for various reasons. A lot of these features are exposed largely to help out with Audio Link, which is a audio visualizer for shaders that you can use. Now for November, we got an example for graphics.blit added into the SDK, so you can actually have an idea of how to use it if you're starting. And here they just set up a mini map prefab that you can see where people are in, in like a dot that's moving around in your scene. They also exposed a few other functions than just Blit, but they're a little bit obtuse and more again for audio link stuff. November also got the announcement of the Udon video and screenshots thing. This is basically a future feature where you'll be able to record and save video and images just in your world with Udon. Presumably there will be like a little pop-up that might tell you, oh hey, something's recording and stuff like that and you, you'll probably have to like okay it in the future and stuff. Again, it's an incomplete feature, but they were showing it off and that's pretty exciting for actually being able to save out like a custom screenshot and stuff instead of having to do random camera things and then telling the player where to put their camera to s save like, oh, here's your score at the end of the game and stuff like that. It sounds like a lot of these specific features are added so that they can do things in the New Year's Eve map and it's really nice to have those things filtering down into like the SDK that all of us could use. We also got to see some updates on the Creator Companion UX update, which are pretty nice and it's looking pretty good. But again, none of the update is released yet. And we got thorough reminders that SDK2 deprecation is on its way uh, because the Creator Companion just won't support it, so they won't be distributing the SDK2 Unity package anywhere. And this is planned for after January. In the future, you won't really even be able to upload new or update old uh, SDK2 content either. And I mean, at this point, it's probably for the best. Now into December. This was largely a month of showcasing features that we're going to be seeing in the upcoming year. So now along with the video and screenshots that we got showcased in November, we also got to see remote image loading. This basically allows us to look at a image that is at a URL and then load it into the world. This is great for getting like posters or different stuff like that uh, loaded into the world that you can update on like Google Drive or some something somewhere where you can have a URL that always goes to that thing and then you just upload update it in world at some point. The SDK2 script uh, VRC panorama wasn't meant to be used for that, but it did end up getting used for that 
quite often. Along with image loading, we will also be getting string loading, where you can have a JSON file on the internet somewhere, and at that URL, you just read the text into VRChat, and then you can do things based on this. You can use this to load data from, like, save files or something like that, or update your Patreon list or something at any time. There's a lot of things that you can do with just pumping random information into VRChat and being able to use it. And now, the big announcement of December. Udon 2, baby! It's actually basically the third anniversary of the original public alpha of Udon, so it's really interesting seeing it. No, you will not need to convert anything. No, this won't break anything. It's mostly just a, a back-end change to how Udon works to better allow for exposing more features and stuff. So right now, VRChat basically has to manually add a feature one after another that people want, and they have to take into account how hard is it to expose that feature and the security risks of doing that. With the new version, it'll basically just be based on C-sharp rather than Udon assembly, where now it is C-sharp that gets turned into WebAssembly. It's a little bit complicated, but basically this means that instead of having difficulty exposing things, the only question is the security one because it'll just be exposed by default. This means we can get lists, dictionaries, actions, custom classes, just everything. It's going to be great. Now, we don't have any dates for when this stuff is going to be released. So, I mean, lo looking forward to it in November. It does sound like there's going to be multiple releases for different segments of it. And the first thing that will be coming is the C-sharp compiler, which will be really nice. In the future, we'll get the whole WebAssembly features and stuff uh, after that but it will be coming one step at a time. And that's pretty much our updates for the last th three months. God, I need to do these more often. Yeah, super exciting to have like the Udon 2 thing come out. Uh, again, Udon 2 is just a working title. It's not actually the, the, the final name of the product at all. Because again, you won't have to change anything. It's just a backend change. None of your stuff will break. It will just be the same thing. And previously uploaded content is still going to work as well. There's, there's, there's no worry there. But yeah, with all the features that Momo is working on, like the JSON and texture importing and stuff like that, and all of the stuff that Merlin is doing for getting Udon 2 to work, really excited and hope that those kinds of people get to see their family sometimes. Yeah, there was definitely too much for me to go without covering here at the end of the year, so I needed to go ahead and actually make a, a video on this stuff. Plus, it was a good excuse for me to catch up on all the features that we've gotten over the past few months. All right. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you again.